they be cramping my style all week. Craving chocolate trees, checking pants, checking seeds, sipping herbal tea, and fight for menstrual equity. Sheesh, sheesh, sheesh. Hey, hey, I get cramps at. Get cramps at. tuned in to the Kick Cramps Ass podcast with your host, Brittany Walker, advocating for menstrual equity, period poverty, and womb wellness. New episodes on Menstruation Mondays. Menstruation Monday, everybody. Welcome to the Kick Cramps Ass podcast, where I'm your host, Brittany Walker, and you've made it to episode 21 in season two, where we'll be talking about heightening your spiritual wellness for National Wellness Month. It is Monday, August 12th, 2024, and you know we like to kick off each episode with an I am power statement. I representing inspiration, A representing affirmations, and M representing manifestations. And the I am power statement for today is I am honoring my spiritual wellness as I embody my beliefs, values, and ethics as I continue to work towards discovering my purpose in this lifetime. Ashe. And we also like to do a quote of the day. And today's is the privilege of a lifetime is to become who you really are by Carl Jung. So a lot of people think spiritual wellness is all about religion and that's not entirely true. So we're going to be tapping more into that in this episode. So I'm going to go ahead and take a sip of my good old cramp elixir and we're going to cut to a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with you. Have you tried our best seller, the cramp elixir? It's our herbal tea blend designed to reduce and eliminate menstrual cramps, PMS symptoms, and other uterine health issues that are hindering your day-to-day -day progress. Our elixir may decrease inflammation, reduce stress and anxiety, regulate blood flow, balance your mood, and it can kick cramps ass. It includes a variety of herbs including hibiscus, red raspberry leaf, calendula, motherworth, awashaganda, plus more. Head over to kickcrampsass.org and grab yours today. Now, back to the show. Welcome back to that commercial break. We hope that you enjoyed it. Now, what is spiritual wellness? So again, August is National Wellness Month. And it focuses on the emotional, mental, spiritual, and physical components of wellness. So for the month of August, each week, um, we're going to be releasing an episode focusing on a specific wellness component. So last week, we did tap into emotional wellness. And this week, we're going to be tapping into spiritual wellness. So again, what is spiritual wellness? Now, many may assume that it has to do with your religious beliefs, but that is not always the case. Now, if you are tapping in more into focusing on your higher power and who you believe in, then most people think of that being like a spiritual realm and not so much of a religious realm. But actually, spiritual wellness is a sense of purpose and it's the meaning in your life that's based on your personal beliefs and your values. Now, this can be from like family values, things that you've acquired over time, maybe from the corporation that you work for and their values that they have. Now, your spiritual wellness can involve connecting with nature, self-reflection, and other activities. So again, spiritual wellness, guys, has to do with your own purpose, your sense of self, why are you here? <laughs> what is your purpose in this lifetime? What is it that you should be accomplishing knowing the power within yourself and what you are truly capable of achieving? All right. So again, they talked about nature, self-reflection and other activities that can help you tap into spiritual wellness. So let's talk about that a bit more. Now, when it comes to nature, if you're into astrology, you've heard us talk about um, astrology before and how that comes into play, especially with the menstrual cycle and the moon phases and things of that sort. Also knowing you like your birth chart, what's your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising. So you can get a better sense of who you are, why you act the way you act, why you you, my people might think, hey, your personality reflects this, what your attitude is about, why you love a certain way, why you get angry a certain way. So if you're into astrology, 
I always talk about getting into nature. It's always good to connect with your actual element because for instance, I'm a Scorpio, so I am a water sign. Other water signs are Cancer and Pisces. With the elements of the Zodiac, we have fire, water, air, and earth. So with me being a water sign, when I like to tap back into nature, I like to go by water. So that's going to the beach, going to swim in the ocean, in the rivers, in the lakes. I love running by water. I love hiking by waterfalls. Um, even if it's not in nature, let's just talk about in the house. I love taking long showers. <laughs> I am not that person that's going to take a two or three minute shower. I take very long, hot piping hot showers. I love taking bath soaks. We talked to you guys how important it is to take soaks to help regulate your cycle and symptoms that you may be experiencing. And we even have a goddess bath potion <laughs> that we offer to help you with your bath soaks. All right, guys, that we um, sell in our KCA store. So again, going back into nature, tapping into maybe your element, whatever your sign is. So if you're an earth sign, that would be Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus. If you're an air sign, that's Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. And if you're a fire sign, that's Sagittarius, Leo, or Aries. So tapping into what suits you for nature. I even like to, when I tap back into nature, since I am a water sign, my moon sign is Taurus, so I'm an earth sign as well. My rising sign is Libra, so that's air. So then um, since I don't have that fire directly um, within my um, astrology, then what I'll do is maybe practice like pranayama breaths, which is like a fire heat breath through yoga, which is like um, what you could do is um, restrict your nostril, one of your nostrils and like breathe in one and breathe in out the other one, um, building like fire in your uh, body. So that's a way that I can tap into all my elements. I could be sitting on the beach. I could be grounding in the earth, making sure like my body and my feet are touching like the sand and the ground. I could feel the air and the breeze flowing through me. And then maybe sitting by a bonfire, um, maybe lighting like some incense or some candles or sitting there and practicing that fire breath through yoga to tap into all the elements to become one. Now, I mentioned about grounding yourself with your feet and like putting your feet in the sand like I would do at the beach, but you can also do that with your bare feet in the grass. That's another great way that you can ground yourself. I remember being younger and um, again, growing up in Texas, spending summers in Texas, going um, family that's in Louisiana, things of that sort. Country girl, so running in the grass with your shoes off, things of that sort. We were told like, hey, if you're going to go on concrete, put your shoes on. You don't want to step on glass. You don't want to step on something. Um, but actually grounding your feet is really, really good to do. And then another way that you can connect with nature is connecting with the sun. So watching like the sunrise and the sunset, maybe even um, going to do activities out in nature. So I don't like using the word picnic per se because of what the real meaning is behind slavery and you know hanging a person of color and then going around it so you're picnic if you get it right so then just like having food or having lunch or indulging in like a good meal a smoothie a nice cold beverage in nature is pretty cool going camping is always a good thing because it allows you to be there like all day spend the night there wake up to it one of my favorite things is to actually camp on the beach there are some beaches around the world that you're able to do that um so just being able to go to sleep and listening to like that ocean breeze that ocean uh, the sounds of the ocean the air everything's just so crisp and waking up to that is always so nice now also with connecting with nature you can use your actual senses so maybe you're sick and you're unable to go outside or you're not feeling well or maybe it's too hot outside for you you don't want to bear that sun look at pictures Use your senses. So look at nature pictures. Maybe go look at some National Geographic. Maybe go Google something. I love YouTube because you can go to YouTube and put in certain things in the search bar and they'll have like music lists. So they'll have like nature sounds going on. But then when you're looking at the actual video, it's like rivers and waterfalls and like a um, drone like flying through the rainforest and going through mountainsides and pretty greenery like in the Netherlands and Switzerland and areas in Africa and Thailand and Asia and all these other beautiful places so doing things like that can allow you to tap into nature um, 
you'll hear people that like to go to bed that have like certain nature sounds on. You might want to hear like the birds chirping or the water dripping or the river stream flowing or things of that sort. So that's an option for you. Going out and just smelling fresh flowers, just getting that scent of that natural fragrance of a flower or a plant. And then you could also just be able to do something as simple as just go sit outside on your patio, <laughs> watch, you know, the full moon and watch or go stargazing, something along those lines. So anything like that, going hiking. All right, guys. Other ways that you could tap into nature is you can bring nature indoors. So maybe you might have a room or a well-lit area where you could open your blinds and um, just allow that natural light to come into your house. Maybe you are a plant mom or a plant daddy. You just want to put plants all around the house to give you that um, nature-y feel, botanical feel. All right, guys? Um, you can also maybe decorate an area. Maybe you're into doing content and you have a content wall designated in your house and you have like different things of greenery or like that fake grass on the wall, things of that sort. Vines hanging down and flowers coming out. So those are ways to tap into nature. You can always watch documentaries. Again, we talk about your senses. We've talked about seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, things of that sort, right? So watching documentaries to help you tap in back into nature too, learning about history, learning about what's currently going on in the world, learning about climate change, things of that sort. And lastly, another way to tap into nature is, again, doing outdoor activities. Um, and people think about outdoor, outdoor activities and they automatically think about sports. Go fly a kite. Just go sit on a bench and just enjoy the uh, nice weather outside. All right, guys, there are so many other things that you can go do. It doesn't have to always be physical activity. It could just be you just being outside, enjoying what's going on in the world that's not in an enclosed space. All right. So we talked about nature. Let's talk about self-reflection now as another form of ways people see spiritual wellness. We said nature, self-reflection, and other activities. So with self-reflection, practicing gratitude, we talked about that in our last episode with emotional wellness. Practicing gratitude is extremely important. Focusing on the good things in your life, being grateful for waking up another day. If you believe in a higher power, being grateful for that and praying to that. If you believe in that power within yourself, then tapping into that, doing your manifestation manifestations and your affirmations, all your inspirational uh, statements and things of that sort, uh, saying it in the mirror. One thing um, my mom has always told me growing up, uh, your attitude determines your altitude. That was one motto and mantra that she drilled into my head. So waking up and being optimistic and starting off with a positive outlook on life is really, really good. And also just being grateful of everything that's happened. Blessings and lessons. When bad things happen to you, people want to always just look at the negative in it and not look at the blessings in it and seeing what you can learn from those situations or how you can make yourself better or um, how you can grow from those situations as well. All right, guys. Next thing with self-reflection, asking yourself questions. Maybe it, you might reject other people wanting to ask you questions or talk about change and things in your life, but you shouldn't be like that with yourself. All right, guys. So if you can't be honest with anybody else, which you should be honest with everybody, be honest with yourself. Take a moment each day and ask yourself some of the hard questions. How are you feeling? What does that emotion mean for you? If you're angry, what was it that triggered you? What don't you want to feel again? How can you um, avoid this from happening? And if you can't avoid it, what are contingency plans or ways that you could pivot away from these things so you don't have to be surrounded by like toxicity or negative energy or behaviors, right? Um, also, like maybe journaling your habits. This gives you a good time to write out these things and put them in a journal. All right, guys. Um, talking about your achievements, talking about things that you might have dreamt about or things that come to yourself. You want to be able to ask yourself questions and then be able to reflect off of that so that you can really grow and evolve into you are who you were meant to be. And I mentioned about journaling again, if you um, don't have like statements and things in there, then I'm sorry, if you don't have questions or things to ask yourself, then write out statements, just write what comes to your mind, whatever you are feeling in that moment, and then come back and maybe answer those questions. 
Maybe you can provide answers on spot. Maybe that gives you an opportunity to start helping on or working with your problem solving and your critical think thinking skills so that you can create realistic resolutions for yourself. Doing these things is not only going to just help your spiritual wellness, it's going to help your wellness overall and help you with goal setting in life. All right. So again, with self-reflection, we're going to go with journaling being its own thing. I know we briefly mentioned it with asking yourself questions, but let's roll into journaling in general. It is a great form of writing that encourages you to explore your thoughts and consider your emotions and experiences. This also gives you the opportunity to write down your SMART goals, things that are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely, things that you can really truly set for yourself to achieve and whether that's a one month goal three month a half a year six months a one year maybe you're a business owner so you're thinking three to five years down the line maybe you're working on a specific wellness program that you want to focus on a specific goal for yourself for the next six months and you're setting you for that but again those um that information could be journaled all right guys and then i mentioned briefly about dreams earlier if you have dreams and you wake up and those dreams are very prominent and they're kind of in your head and you can't get them out your head write out what you dream even bullet point like main factors that stood out to you main takeaways maybe you're sitting there and you start daydreaming and your mind drifts write those things down because Everything happens for a reason. If you're given that thought, that emotion, if that specific subject or per people, place, person, thing, whatever comes to you, write it out. It came to you for a reason. That may can lead to something that's going to connect to another goal down the line. Maybe that is a business idea that came to you. Maybe that's a new skill that you should develop. So write those things out because that also is the first step in manifesting things and bringing things to life and then being able to apply action to those goals so you can actually bring them into fruition and make them happen all right guys another point of self-reflection is meditation we're probably going to talk about meditation a lot throughout these next couple of podcast episodes because it's so important emotionally mentally physically just helping yourself ground getting rid of anxiety helping you to relax so again meditation can help you clear your mind of distractions it helps you to relax and reduce anxiety it can also help you move past self-doubt and fear that you may develop so that you can be more optimistic and have a positive attitude fear is something that you develop within yourself and most people don't realize that and even if you are fearful of something say you're fearful of heights maybe you want to go do something to overcome those heights maybe you're fearful of bugs maybe you can get to a point where you're not fearful of them and you just let them coexist or if it's something that you're just extremely frightened of maybe you can come up with a game plan so that if you do stumble into that fear you have something that can counteract that but fear it's meant to come in and distract you. So we want to be able to do things to remove those self-doubts from our head, those obstacles and those challenges and meditation works. And not saying that you have to do a drastic one hour meditation every day. If you're into that, go for it. But some people think that you have to go that long and you don't. It could be as simple as five minutes. It could be as simple as you're at work and you're having a very tough day and you just take a moment. If you have an office, shut your door. If you're in your cubicle, have some time to yourself. If you need to, step up and go away to the restroom. But give yourself a moment to just take a couple of minutes just to center yourself, to clear your mind of the things that are causing the anxiety that's causing the stress that's causing you to be distracted things that are invaluable to you at that point all right guys now rolling from meditation another option for self-reflection is rolling into breath work you could take those same one or two minutes and do breath work i always say something as easy as inhaling holding at the top and exhaling for a certain amount of time so we're just going to do a quick practice right now on the podcast so we're going to inhale for four so inhale We're going to hold at the top for three seconds. And then we're going to release for four seconds. <sighs> deep, deep, big sigh. And you could do that over and over and over again. As long as you want. You could go up on how long you want to inhale and how long you want to hold at the top and how long you want to release. And then this is also similar to like Lamaze class and what they teach um, women that are pregnant to start preparing for their, if they have contractions and to be able to push when it's time to push when the baby's ready to come. Breath work is so essential for the body and it's been around for thousands and thousands of years, guys. So 
be mindful of how important that is with connecting with your breath and reflecting. And that can help you think more clearly and be more honest about what's going on. Because some people, when they hear something or something comes to them, they might freeze up and instantly want to tell like a white lie or people please so that person doesn't get mad at them and they don't have a specific reaction. It's to, to keep the peace and things of that sort. And maybe doing that breath work and just taking time to rezone <laughs> and reconfigure what you have going on and then come out and just be very honest about what you're feeling all right guys now another option for self-reflection is actually identifying your values we talked about earlier spiritual wellness about knowing your purpose and going based off of your beliefs and values but how do you identify those so self-reflection can help you do that by identifying and evaluating your fundamental values and how they affect your decisions your relationships and how you deal with conflict resolution if you have signed up for menstrual therapy i typically have you do conflict resolution practices, conflict management practices, so you can figure out better ways to handle conflict. Because whether you believe it or not, people deal with conflict on a daily basis and they might not recognize it as conflict because it's not screaming, yelling, cursing, and being something that's extremely toxic. But conflict happens all the of the time so we want to be mindful of those things also treating yourself like a business meaning make a mission statement for yourself make a vision for yourself set values for yourself select a uh, select what your beliefs and your norms are going to be and then have those boundaries set so people are, have a clear understanding when they interact with you what they're dealing with what they can expect what they're going to know consistently one thing that people can say about me I know consistently I'm a person of my word, integrity, you know, honest about what's going on, very straightforward and ethical in practices and actions. So those are things that I truly value and great communication, great time management, being empathetic, you know, so guys. Think about what you want those values to be for you, all right? And that's going to truly help you heighten your spiritual well, uh, spiritual wellness. Now, you could also pull from your family, family values. Talked about that earlier. Are your work values? And the reason why I said treat yourself like a business because... Um, a typical organization that has a really great structure is going to have values set that they not only have set for the organization, but they're going to expect that from all their internal stakeholders, meaning all their leaders, their employees, anybody that works for that company from the founder all the way down to maybe um, the entry level position. Everybody is going to be expected to abide by those values because that's going to help increase the company culture is going to help make a positive work environment. And that's the same thing you want to set for yourself. All right. But of course, readjust um, what works for you. And at the present time that you are at in your life, maybe you might have had a certain value that you had in your teens because of what how you were raised but now you're in your 30s and you might look at things differently maybe you're now in your 60s and you had different values in your 30s but then also had different values when you're in your 20s so it's nothing wrong with readjusting what works for you but just know that when you recognize that a value or a specific thing is no longer aligning with what you're wanting to do and where you're evolving towards it's okay to let that thing go and readjust as needed and lastly, with self-reflection, we talked about nature, but tapping into nature is a part of self-reflection because spending time in nature can help you clear your head and remove the distractions, which can help you get into the right frame of mind for your self-reflection. And one thing I will definitely uh, want to substantiate or corroborate that statement is I love to do no technology. Um, I go on a no technology cleanse a minimum of twice a year where I will go one full week, a full seven days of no technology, not dealing on social media, not dealing with anything, nothing. And typically when I do that, I'm out in nature somewhere where it's like I can watch TV if I want to, but I'm not going to do that because it's part of technology. I can go into my phone and look at videos and stream and get on social media, but that's not part of I mean, that's part of technology. I like to get away get away from everything and be in nature and then go explore, go walking through hunt, you know, hiking through a forest, um, 
like in Hawaii, I love hiking through the rainforest, going again, going to the beach or going by water, going to swim, you know, just taking a nice walk, going to watch the sunset, stargaze, things of that sort. And that helps me become creative. It helps me tap within. It helps me self-reflect on things that areas of improvement, things that I can do better at, things that I did great at. So let me celebrate the small wins and show myself grace along the way. All right, guys. Now, lastly, when it comes with um, spiritual wellness, we said nature, we said self-reflection. Now we're going to tap on other activities. So we already talked about meditation, big activity to indulge in. Yoga, Yoga helps you to get grounded. Yoga helps you to be mobile and flexible. It helps you to rebalance your hormones. It helps with all your different wellness factors, not just spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical as well. Prayer. If you're into prayer, do it. Um, back when I was more religious, I would pray first thing in the morning before I do anything. Before, moment I open my eyes and I see that I can wake up and have another like, day, of, um, sorry, and have another day to have another opportunity of life being grateful and i'm thankful right praying after uh, before meals praying before i go to bed praying when good stuff happen praying when bad stuff happen right but now being more um spiritual and um more free in what i believe in that to me is my morning regimen again still when i first open my eyes the first thing that i do is do my gratitude do all my gratitude statements, thank the most high, thank the ancestors, thank the universe, the sun, the moon, everything, um, the knowledge, the support, the love that they have bestowed on me, right? Um, also doing my I am power statements, my affirmations, my manifestations, my inspirations, getting me started for the day, journaling my thoughts, any dreams, anything that's coming to mind, what I want to accomplish, what do I want to get done? What do I have going on? So whatever prayer looks like for you, indulge in that whatever grat extending gratitude or showcasing gratitude looks like for you showcase that all right other activities journaling we talked about that earlier as a part of self-reflection another form of activity is serving your community tapping into other people and helping them find their purposes maybe your purpose is to serve others i feel like my purpose is to serve educate and heal so serving my community is very important and that helps me heighten my spiritual well wellness it also helps me to find out what problems are going on in my community in my economy how can i contribute to help resolve some of these issues to make things easier for individuals that are suffering from things that i am highly skilled in all right and then another activity for spiritual heightening is indulging in music and arts dancing listening to your favorite music singing all off key in the shower or while you're um in the car you know going to listen to music live going to a concert maybe going to um a open mic night me going to listen to poetry going to an art gallery maybe doing some painting on your own um you know earlier in our uh, season we had Whitney Jones with Sacred Womb Connections who was doing blood art with her menstrual blood if you're into that get into it so so many different activities that you can get into all right guys now some things that we do want to discuss with you are some individuals may also consider spiritual wellness as mindfulness mindfulness so that's being aware of your senses and your feelings in the moment without judgment or interpretation all right this can also include breathing techniques so we talked about breath work earlier and guided imagery maybe you need something to assist you along the way maybe some type of looking at photographs or a slideshow maybe some type of visual art can help you do that um now mindfulness may improve focus and working memory there are several studies that prove that that have done research to showcase that and i think being mindful just helps you again once you're able to self-reflect that means you're being mindful when you're able to be empathetic to what other people have going on that's being mindful when you're able to recognize danger or a sense of a negative situation that's brewing that's being mindful being able to read the room and realize that maybe you're not saying the best thing right now. Maybe your energy may be a little too much for individuals. That's being mindful. All right, guys. So that is very important when it comes to your spiritual wellness. Another factor is 
the harmony of your surroundings. So aligning your actions and intentions with the environment to benefit everybody. You want to ensure that you are contributing to a sustainable economy, a sustainable development, sustainable society. You want to be a positive contribution and not a negative contribution in your community, in your nation, in globally based off of what it is that your purpose is or what it is that you're wanting to fight for or practice for or advocate for spread awareness about all right guys now consider how your actions may impact the world so that you can inspire kindness maybe compassion maybe altruism and if you don't know what altruism is that is like the principle and the practice of the concern of the well-being of others. Maybe being concerned of the well-being and happiness of others. And that's including humans and animals above yourself. Now, this is not saying that you have to people please and you just got to put everybody above you and put yourself down and you just get beat up and drained and soaked out of every all the life out of you, right? No, we're not saying that. But when you are truly serving and educating others and healing others, you have to be able to put others first. When you're into like a plant-based diet, um, you're thinking about the animals, right? You're thinking about putting those animals above you. You think about what the cows go through where they're being forced to be milked with these machines tapped to their nipples and that's how they're producing milk. What about these cows that are having to be raped? They're, they're being raped against their wills to reproduce so that they can keep reproducing meat. You don't think about things like that, right? So just again, being mindful of your surroundings. And then lastly, when it comes to other forms of what people think about when it's spiritual wellness is balancing your personal needs. Balancing your needs with the needs of others is a part of healthy relationships. It can't always be just take, 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 take. It has to be a give and take situation. It has to be reciprocal. And not saying that every time I give to you, I'm expecting you to give back, but it, it can't always be that I'm always giving and you're never giving back. And that works in all forms of relationships. That's personal relationships, that's business relationships, that's working relationships, that's with your neighbors, that's with um, if you're a part of a sports team, if you're part of an organization that you uh, volunteer or you're a member of, be mindful that you have to be able to balance the needs and what's going to work for the greater good. You're not always going to get what you want and those people are not always going to get what they want. But we try to do what's best and compromise and then try to find a balance because that is how you maintain very great healthy relationships. All right, guys. So again, always giving a mouthful. We want to give you some things to sit on, but we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with you guys. All right. Now, navigating to our resource center, we want to give you guys access to all these complimentary resources that we have available for you. We have our blog, book suggestions, our menstrual blood chart, exercise moves to kick cramps ass. We have recipes. We have reports. We have research studies that helps to prove how holistic approaches assist with achieving wellness. We have wellness tips, wellness referrals, so business organizations and individuals that we would like to refer to you that are our strategic partners, wound terminology, maybe there's some options that you're not aware of. This can help you out. And lastly, yoga moves to help you kick cramps ass. Feel free to take advantage of this complimentary resource. All right, guys, now back to the show. All right, guys, welcome back from that commercial break. We hope that you enjoyed it. Now, spiritual wellness may also assist you with helping you to cope and with the trauma of a diagnosis or a treatment, or even maybe some childhood trauma or past relationship trauma. So receiving a diagnosis that drastically impacts you can affect your spiritual wellness. It might put you down. Um, you will hear a lot of people that might get cancer and say, God, why me? Jesus, why me? Um, you'll hear people say, you know, it's unfair that this is happening to me. I thought I was doing this right. I thought I was doing this right. And that can impact you. It can bring... Um, a pessimistic attitude it can make you maybe have negative thoughts and make you go down a um a rabbit hole or start spiraling out of control and we want to be able to try to control that so maintaining your spiritual wellness can help you have a sense of control over that healing from childhood trauma something could have happened to you um 
maybe watching an abusive relationship, maybe um, being sexually molested, um, maybe experiencing a traumatic divorce between your parents, maybe a person died when you were younger. Something could have happened to you that has you still being triggered, having P PTSD. So again, having a sense of control and being able to heighten your spiritual wellness can help control these things when they do arise. And then also healing from past relationship traumas. And this could be like from a past boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, something along those lines. It could be from a friendship. Maybe a friend really betrayed you. Maybe um, somebody that you just really trusted was jealous of you all these years and they showed you some actions that you just never thought that that person would showcase. Um, maybe even just having like codependent relationships, you being codependent on maybe um, a friend, a sibling, a mate, a co-worker or something that's not the healthiest for you that has you not making you know wise decisions putting too much dependency in another person where they have so much power of your life and then make trying to hold other people accountable for your actions and things of that sort so we want to just get a sense of control of that all right now spiritual wellness can also help you reduce anxiety stress anger depression which we talked about anxiety and stress earlier especially like having breath work and meditation but this aligns perfectly with emotional mental and physical awareness we want to be able to reduce these things because not anxiety stress things of that sort can lead to other ailments other illnesses um it can get you off focus it can distract you and we just want to be able to reduce these things um Doing hobbies that aid in decreasing these options will help. So doing something that you love, maybe taking 30 minutes a day to go write if you love to. Go read your favorite book that you haven't been able to read in a while. Catching up on a new book that you've been wanting to catch up on. Um, maybe having time to indulge in art. Maybe you just don't want to do nothing and just go sit in a quiet room and just have peace and quiet. <laughs> maybe you want to have time to go take your bath so it cannot be interrupted by anybody. Whatever works for you, do that to help reduce the anxiety, the stress, the depression, and any anger that may arise. Also setting applicable boundaries. We talked about this last episode. We're going to talk about it all throughout the season, all throughout last season, and any time that you hear us talk, setting applicable boundaries with individuals that are not adding value into your life. That's in people, places, or things. Anything that's keeping you from reaching your true elevation that's um, prohibiting you from evolving into who you're meant to be you need to learn how to set those boundaries and then rejecting again invaluable negative or toxic energy those things latch onto you become energy leeches and next thing you know you're doubting yourself you have all this fear you're telling yourself you can't do it you're just steering away from the path that is already set for you and that typically can happen when you're around another miserable person, when you're around an unhappy person, when you're around a person that's consistently negative all the time, that showcases toxic behavior over and over again. You have to remove yourself from those type of people. And sometimes, unfortunately, the hard part about that is it could be your spouse. It could be your parent. It could be your sibling. It could be your best friend. It could be somebody that's so close and dear to you and you just love this person so much and you just can't imagine yourself not having a relationship with that person. But sometimes those are the most toxic and negative situations that we tend to not want to set applicable boundaries with. And if that person really loves you, they're going to understand and maybe that can help them heighten their spiritual wellness and help them evolve into who they're meant to be and help them recognize that maybe they have some unbecoming traits that they might want to adjust or transition as well so they can become their best selves. All right, guys, another way that um, spiritual wellness can also assist you is enhancing the quality of life. Now, that's elevating to your highest self. That's being okay with saying no and not people pleasing or setting those applicable boundaries like we talked about. That could be enjoying the simple things in life. It's the simple things. I Perfect example. I always tell my spouse we do date night every month, two dates, a minimum of two dates where I take her on a date she takes me on a date and then we'll maybe have a third date or so here and there where something we agreed to that we just really wanted to do but at minimum two and I always tell her I don't need no extravagant getting gate I mean <laughs> gate I don't need an extravagant date um if you want to turn up for the birthdays you know for anniversaries if you want to do this and that I'm all down for it but just doing the simple things simple things um I love poetry 
So she has, and my favorite movie is Love Jones. So she has literally recreated the scene called the sanctuary, uh, this place called the sanctuary that's in the movie Love Jones and recreated the scene that I love where, um, Darius, which is a role that's played by Lorenz Tate, does Brother to the Night, which is a very popular poem in the movie. And she reenacted that and made her own poem and then made other poems and things of that sort. Those are simple things to me. It's the thought that counts. Um, leaving me little notes, uh, for instance, like I could be really busy and I say, hey, I'm going to run to the grocery store and I go to go in my wallet and it's like a note. <laughs> sitting there like an inspirational note like you keep going you got this you know i'm so proud of you things of that sort it's those simple things um and then also when it's like tending to myself um simple things for me things that makes me really happy it's like really good cooked food <laughs> biting into like a home cooked meal that's not packaged that's not boxed that's not processed or anything so happy i really 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 love a good puzzle <laughs> I really love like a good puzzle, crossword, trivia game, things of that sort. So simple things. Those things like bring me so much joy. I love laughing. Um, a, one of my favorite shows growing up was the show Martin uh, featuring Martin Lawrence, Tisha Campbell, Tashina Arnold, you know, uh, so many people, so many great names. I was trying to think of Cole and Tommy and everybody just all these great people. Right. And going back and watching old episodes and laughing at episodes that I know was going to happen next, but just getting just pure joy of just pure laughter. Um, yeah, just certain things, just simple laughter, peace, happiness, joy. That's not monetary. That's not materialistic. Think about those things. All right, guys. Becoming debt-free and financially free with discipline also enhances your quality of life. Getting rid of your debt. Stop spending on things that you really don't need at the time. Stop running up the Amazon orders. Stop doing all these food deliveries. Stop going shopping every time you get paid. Stop going on all these extravagant trips all the time. Like Become a minimalist to an extent and then enjoy luxury when it's time to enjoy it. All right, guys, but getting debt free and becoming financially free is going to truly enhance your spiritual awareness all right guys and then the last thing for enhancing those um spiritual awareness and what it can do is um increase the feelings of inner peace and hope that is like the ultimate goal with spiritual wellness you want inner peace hope happiness love those are like again the simple things the free things in life that really mean something so becoming more positive and optimistic can help you maintain your peace you hear me tell you guys all the time when we close out an episode manifesting a positive productive and peaceful whatever that is menstrual journey week day menstruation monday whatever I believe in manifesting peace, manifesting positivity. It's going to help with your productivity. And that's not just work. People think productivity has to do with work. It has to do with being productive in your own life, heightening your own spiritual awareness. All right. Learning how to love on yourself, learning how to be okay with being by yourself. These are very important when increasing your own peace. Most people think that happiness comes from somebody else. Absolutely not. I even say my spouse is not my better half. She's my better whole. Why? I'm whole. Without her, I'm still happy. Her love is a luxury. That's an added luxury to life. What she does as far as like being an amazing partner and catering to my love languages, that's a luxury. I have my own happiness. I am happy with who I am. I love myself. I wake up every day and people could say, ooh, that's kind of conceited and cocky to just be that into yourself. There's a difference between being cocky and conceited and thinking you're better than everybody and you know everything and all this other stuff. And then there's one thing which is looking at yourself and be like, damn, I love you. <laughs> Woman, you have evolved into such an amazing being. You have grown up and matured so much from that young girl that was doing all these things that could have had you six feet under, had you still unhealthy, had you suffering. I love you for taking time to invest in us <laughs> and to make us better and whole. When you love yourself, when you 
are able to overcome your own insecurities when you're able to say, I don't care if that person has this and that person has that, because guess what? I have bam, 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 bam. I have these skills. I look like this. I love myself. That's what you need to have. You don't need anybody else to make you feel loved or to make you feel worthy or to make you feel like you're enough. You already are that. You are the shit. <laughs> and you have to believe that. And then again, if you want to have a relationship, if you want to bring love in, that person should add on to you. And they shouldn't deplete from you either. They don't, you can't be whole and then have somebody that's not whole come in because then they're going to suck you dry. And that's where that energy leaching comes in that we talked about earlier. That's what we talked about earlier about maintaining healthy relationships. All right, guys. So learning to be by yourself is so important. Even with typically working from home and still doing a lot of traveling, um, People assume since both my spouse and I work from home and go to school online and things of that sort that, oh, y'all get to spend all y'all time with each other. No, we don't. We still have to have our individual time. And even after we do our work and our schooling and all that, we still need time to ourselves before we can even come together. Like, give me my time. You give have your time. And then we come together when it's time to have our time. You got to learn how to have that if you are in a relationship and don't be so dependent on somebody to give that to you. All right. Now, becoming whole with yourself makes love so much better when you do welcome that in. Also, anything that requires investment and attention that gives you that time to really pour into that. If you're not healthy and whole, you can't pour time and attention to anything else. You can't be 100%, a 100% great entrepreneur, 100% great wife, a 100% great student, a 100% great worker, a 100% great, you know, pet mom, a 100% great daughter, a 100% great sibling, like, it's impossible. You have to be able to balance those times, seek peace in those different things that you're giving your time and attention to, and that will help with maintaining peace in your life. All right, guys. Now let's talk about tips for heightening your spiritual wellness. All right, guys. Tips. How are we going to implement this? How are we going to make this work? All right. Tips for heightening. Profess affirmations and manifestations through I am power statements daily. We do it at the beginning of each episode. Again, I representing inspiration, A representing affirmations, and M representing manifestations. And doing those every day allows you to be grateful for waking up another day, having another opportunity at life, being healthy and whole. And if not, another chance to work at towards become healthy and whole and improving your wellness. Also, limit your screen time routinely. Ooh. Next tip, <laughs> limit that screen time routinely. And that includes your mobile devices, your TVs, etc., phone, everything. Too much screen time can remove you from a state of being tuned in. If you're just endlessly scrolling, you might think you're endlessly scrolling, but your brain is clocking everything that you're just looking at. And we want to be able to free up that time and that space and that energy for things that are more valuable. All right. So don't always focus on being in your phone, being unattentive to what's going on in front of you, being unattentive to yourself. That's going to help you. All right. Another tip, spend more time in nature to reconnect and get grounded. We've said that a thousand times. I know I'm exaggerating. <laughs> we said that multiple times in this episode. And we're going to continue to say it. Another tip is realigning your chakras through guided practices. Make sure those seven chakras are on point. Crown third eye. All right, guys, throat, our heart, solar plexus, our sacral. We talk about sacral a lot. That has to do with the womb. It has to do with creativity, orange. All right. And then that root chakra. All right. Important to realign and get grounded. This can be cleansing your energy. If you want to seek professional, you can go see like a Reiki. You can get on YouTube University and go look things up. However, realigning your chakras will help you not have blockages in those areas. It will help you remain focused. It will help you not get distracted. And this can be done also through guided meditation, through guided yoga, things of that sort. All right. And then lastly, for tips on how to heighten that spiritual awareness is evolve it to your highest self, searching for a deeper understanding of who you are and maintaining that peace. If anybody tries to tell you you're acting funny, you're being different, that's weird, that's abnormal. Okay, let that be. 
you're on your own journey. Don't let anybody deter you from that journey. If it makes sense to you, keep doing it. What you have to remember is when you start going on your own spiritual journey, if you're not already there, everybody around you is going to not be as comfortable because you're evolving. They might want you in a certain state because they don't want to evolve. They might be in that state because they don't know how to evolve yet. They um, might want you there because of whatever reason suits them. But you have to do what's best for you. And this is the time where we come in where no is going to come into play, setting applicable boundaries, removing things that are distracting or invaluable, um, making sure that you're not wasting your time on negative, toxic energies, behaviors. All right, guys. So important. Now, how do we implement all this? We talked about last episode how to implement and we're going to give the same tips. We're just going to run through them really briefly. But if you would like to go into more details, feel free to listen to episode 20 and on implementation on any of the wellness components. But how are we going to heighten our spiritual wellness? Implementing, you have to want it to truly start and keep up with your routine. There will be down days, especially when you are on your period or if you have something else going on or a distraction or a family event or anything. Anything can impact you at any time, but you have to be able to shift gears, readjust temporarily and get back to your routine. You have to want this. And it takes 30 days, a minimum of 30 days to develop a good habit. And it also could take that same 30 days to let go of a bad habit. So guys, you have the power within you and you have to really want this and anything is possible. You could definitely do it. Also, another uh, tip for implementing is or how to implement is manage your time effectively, factoring your wellness routine into your daily, weekly, monthly and yearly schedule. We want to evaluate and update as needed for when changes come into play. Again, we talked about your period may come into play. You might have a vacation coming up. Life events happen. You can readjust but we want to make sure we're evaluating so we are staying on track for the SMART goals that we have set. And speaking of SMART goals, next way of implementing is setting those SMART goals, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Making sure that we are having those subtasks added, making sure we're showing ourselves accountable, making sure we have those reminders set in our phones, our to-do set, we're writing on our whiteboards, we're doing whatever it takes to make sure that we're implementing this plan of action. Also, another way to implement is showcasing grace along the way. You got to be patient with yourself. It's going to take discipline. You're going to be challenged. You're going to run into obstacles and it's okay. It's a part of life. And like anything about anything else that you've overcame, you did it. You made it and you're still here and you could do this too. All right, guys. Then lastly, celebrate all wins. That's how we implement this. We have to celebrate all wins, including the small ones, to be your own motivator and continue to build your own confidence so that you can sustain a consistent wellness routine. That way you don't have to be codependent on somebody else. You don't have to have an accountability partner to make sure you're getting it done. You're getting it done for yourself. All right, guys. So we're going to take a quick commercial break and we're going to be right back with you. Welcome to Kit Cramps as Diet. Org. Now, feel free to subscribe and get 15% off. By doing so, you're subscribing to our newsletter and you'll receive the latest news, resources, and updates. We appreciate you for connecting with us, so we want to get you with 15% off on your first order. So go ahead and leave your first name, your last name, and your email address, and you'll have this 15% off coupon that you can use towards your first order. Now, back to the show. All right, guys, welcome back from that commercial break. We hope that you enjoyed it. So we want to go ahead and recap. We talked about heightening your spiritual wellness for National Wellness Month here in August 2024. All right, guys, so we're so excited about this month, giving you all these wonderful wellness tips to help you embody what it really means to achieve optimal wellness all right now we're still accepting listeners mail so feel free to comment on this episode or if not you can email us for a more personalized and a more intimate um approach and that's at contact at kickcramsass.org which will be listed in the description of this episode be sure to like our podcast share with somebody that you feel like can resonate with it all right and we also want you to subscribe to our website not only will you get a 15 percent off discount for our kca store when you do shop on there but you will also have 
insight and be the first to know about resources, tips, tools, events, and everything that we have going on, all right? You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, which will give you additional content to help you kick cramps ass, all right, guys? It's been such a pleasure talking with you today, talking about heightening your spiritual wellness for National Wellness Month. This is season two, episode 21 of the Kick Cramps Ass podcast. We want to send gratitude out to all of you for tuning in on this good old menstruation Monday. And if there's not anything else, we'll be seeing you for next menstruation Monday. And we want to manifest a positive, productive, and peaceful menstrual journey ahead, day, and remainder of the week. We'll be seeing you next Monday. Peace.